back by popular demand. New Jersey Living is making a return visit to Edison, New Jersey. Based on our results so far with our 20 plus episodes, we're closing in on episode 30. Uh, the Edison episode by far was the most views that we've had of any other episode. So I know there's a lot of interest and a lot of traction for that particular video. So here we are visiting Edison once again. Uh, we got some very interesting uh, content to cover today. Uh, we are right now in Festival Plaza. This is in the 08817 section of Edison, which means we're a little towards the southern end of Edison, nearing in on uh, New Brunswick. We're really bordering Highland Park right now. Highland Park is probably within a mile of where I'm standing right now. Uh, train station is about four blocks away um, from where we are right now as well. Uh, so we are in this plaza that is uh, a hub for Asian cuisine. As you can see behind me, you see that H mark right there and pan around. There are multiple restaurants, all with a similar theme of some kind of Asian cuisine, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese primarily. Uh, even for international students that attend Rutgers University, so we're very near to Piscataway, and uh, just get a plug in that I am a Rutgers alum, so go Red Knight. So we um, have a lot of international students that come in from China that this is a go-to location because they can get some very authentic cuisine. You are going to see some shots, some footage uh, that I've had inside of H Mart, uh, showing a little food, food uh, plaza, showing some of the other uh, items that you don't find in a typical grocery store here in uh, New Jersey. But uh, there are a few uh, shopping centers like this one here that will have a uh, Asian grocery store that you can get a lot of those items uh, that you would see only in those type, type of stores. So I want to thank everybody for joining again. Welcome to those who are new. Uh, if you are new, please be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell to stay aware of upcoming content. For the Jersey Hunters who are with me again, welcome back. Glad you're on for the ride. Let's get it started now. Welcome to New Jersey Living. My name is Corey Jones and I'm a real estate agent with Prestige Properties. And my role is to provide content just like you're going to see today to educate, enlighten, update, and hopefully even a little bit entertain viewers to, uh, who are looking for content about living in New Jersey. And that includes neighborhood scenes, that includes dining locations, it includes iconic locations, things to do. But in general, we are covering the real estate market right here in New Jersey. So if you are looking to purchase or sell real estate, by all means, reach out to me. My, con uh, my contact info is right here below in details. Do feel free to leave comments. I welcome those for insights. Um, people give uh, their own experiences and history here in New Jersey. So by all means, leave that information right here to share with the whole community. Uh, we are, as I said earlier, back in Edison, New Jersey. I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to kind of revisit this and update folks on what's happening in the market right now. And some insights on new construction because we're talking specifically about new construction here in Edison. So we're gonna get that rolling right now. So let's talk a little bit about new construction in New Jersey. If you've seen some of my other episodes, I often mention that there are not many new development housing locations in Northern New Jersey, not within, I would say a roughly 30 to 40 mile radius of Manhattan. What you'll find new will be townhomes and condos, definitely, but not many uh, single family home development sites. But what you do find particularly in a location like here in Edison, 
you see what you see right here behind me, although this is not the property that we're gonna feature uh, in our tour today. Uh, it's actually next door. Uh, so I'm gonna give a little flash of that, but I wanna just pan so you'll get an idea of what new construction often looks like. So there are four homes right here, one across the street, and then you have three all side by side that have been from the foundation built up. So what happens is investors typically will purchase a home that is an older home, and I'm gonna pan back around just so you'll see some of the footprints of other homes in the neighborhood. So these ranch and sometimes Cape style homes are taken down to the foundation. And this particular area that we're in, in Edison, many of the homes are on slabs, so there's no basements. But even homes that have basements can be taken down again to the foundation and then built up, brand new. So these are typically the new construction options that you find here in Edison, likewise the same. So behind us, we're gonna get into the details of 12 Ashley in just a moment, but this is an example of that. Um, when you're looking at new construction, the benefit obviously is that you'll walk into a brand new home. The flip side of that, if you've been in other areas of the country, you'll notice that developments, the benefit there is that all the homes are new and all of them have a certain style and they have a certain finish and there's some degree of continuity. Um, the flip side of what we see right here is that that's not so much the case. These homes are going to be larger and uh, panning around so you'll see right behind across the street, they don't always match the aesthetic of everything in the neighborhood, but it still gives you the value of being in the location that you desire. And Edison is a high demand location. We're not too far from the train station. So let's jump right into the big three. That is the three items that I always cover. So you Jersey hunters already know the routine. We're talking proximity to New York City. We're talking uh, local train station. We're talking schools. Edison gets a check on all three. Uh, really, Edison gets a check plus on all three. Excellent schools, uh, drivable, to, drivable to the city in about 50, 55 minutes. Uh, the train here will get you to the uh, Penn Station in roughly about the same amount of time. And you also um, have the option of going to the Island, which is Metro Park, the Island uh, train station that will provide an express train to get you there in 36 minutes. So a few details we wanna cover when it comes to new construction. New construction, the value of the home obviously is going to change. So if I pan around one more time, uh, the homes that we see here, um, I haven't done a market analysis on these particular ones, but knowing Edison, they would roughly be in probably about a 375 up to 450 range, these homes that you're seeing right here roughly, okay? Um, obviously you build a new home, that home is not gonna be that same market value. The taxes are not going to be the same. So places uh, like Edison, consistent with everyone else, everywhere else in the state of New Jersey, there is a tax rate that's consistent for every home. It's the same. And then there is what's uh, the equalization rate or the assessed rate. So taxes do not reflect the actual purchase price or market value of the home. It's what the town assesses it for. And every town has their own way of calculating that. So there will be uh, obviously a tax increase. How much of a tax increase is gonna depend on the purchase price. The equalization rate usually is a number, a percentage usually, that's applied. So if a home is bought for 800,000, let's say the equalization rate is 80%, they'll take 80% of that purchase price and that will be the tax assessed value for the town and then they apply the tax rate to that. Uh, okay, so there's gonna be more taxes to pay, but again, the, Benefit is that you get a brand new construction home in a desirable location, and that's what we get at Edison. So let's jump into the details of 12 Ashley. Okay, details on 12 Ashley. So as you can see, 12 Ashley is a new construction pan up to make sure you can see the entire front profile of the home. Um, it is five bedroom, three full baths, was listed at 750 sold at 725 but it was only three days on the market so when the developer builder owner saw the 725 price no doubt they were very pleased with what they saw i'm just going to try to pan up the side of the house here so you can 
appreciate there is dual zone. Any home that is done to this scale should absolutely have dual zone heating and cooling. Cooling, all right, because if it's not, it kind of reflects the quality of the, the work that was done. Um, so this home uh, did not last very long, went at 725. Uh, this again is on a slab, so there's no basement. Uh, but from a proximity standpoint, we are very much walking distance to the local elementary school. The high school is a few blocks away. It's a very convenient location for both shopping uh, and commuting. So this gives you the general price range of what new construction is going to look like in Edison. And by the way, I know I typically keep all of the sales within 30 days, but to get three new constructions, I had to bump it back a little bit into July. So we're looking more so at homes that were anywhere from within 30 days to about maybe 75-ish days uh, in terms of uh, the closing date, okay? So, uh, but this again, just gives you an idea of the trend that we are seeing uh, in Edison and other towns where there are opportunities to knock down and rebuild where it's with a smaller home, but has a very, very amenable footprint for a much larger home. So we have two more stops to make. I'll see you at the next home. Our second stop is at 14 Rosewood Road, directly behind me. This is uh, obviously another new construction. Uh, this one, not an attached garage, but a detached two-car garage. Uh, this one was five bedroom, three bath. Listed a dollar short of 780, so 779, 999. Sold at 796, 36 days on the market. Uh, so this, um, it's hard to tell reasons why uh, the length of time on market. Sometimes it, uh, the timing of struck construction completion could be a factor. Uh, when it was marketed could be a factor. There's a numerous, uh, a variety of factors to factor in as to when it sold. But I'm going to also take a peek at some of the neighboring homes because this particular stretch of the block has quite a few new construction projects. Um, so. I am intentionally, as you probably are noticing, that you don't see tax numbers. I typically put a tax number uh, up after I put the details up if I don't mention it directly. Going back to that tax conversation. So when it comes to taxes, those ta on a new construction home, when it was built on an existing foundation, if we use the existing taxes that are available, that's going to reflect the home that was already there before construction. Um, on the record, there's not going to be a new um, tax number displayed until the town has done the assessment. And that doesn't happen like immediately. So I'm leaving tax numbers off, but relatively, when you look at size and um, number of bedroom and baths, it's gonna be pretty consistent with, uh, with other homes on the market or that have recently sold. There's not a, uh, some kind of really deep discount that you're gonna see. Uh, compared to an existing home that sold. I mean, sometimes you'll hear maybe building on existing foundations saves money. Well, there could be a little bit of a difference in the equalization rate that some towns use if it's built on existing foundation versus brand new construction, but uh, that's not that substantial you know, in terms of uh, saving money. Um, so here you can see there's something under contract right here behind me. And then there are another, looks like three, the next three homes pretty much follow the same general pattern, all right? So uh, you'll see some of this on my uh, street footage, definitely, that uh, you'll sign, sometimes see a stretch of properties that have certainly been either substantially renovated or knocked down to slab and then built up, all right? So you also are probably getting a general feel that when you're looking at the price point in Edison anyway, of a new construction, they're going to be kind of in that 700 up into even 800 type of range. And that's gonna be pretty consistent uh, in the 8817. If we see similar projects in 08820, Northern Edison, we're talking different price point. And if you've seen my other uh, Edison episode, you know, that has everything to do with being zoned for J.P. Stevens High School, which is one of the top public schools in the state and in the nation. So that gives you 
pretty much an idea of what you're shopping for and where you're shopping for with a lot of the uh, newer construction uh, homes here in Addison. So we have one more stop to go and I'll see you there at the final stop. We're at our final stop in front of 68 Prospect. 68 Prospect, another five bedroom, three bath. We'll be picking up a pattern. This tends, tends to be the trend of, of the new construction homes in Edison. They tend to have five bedrooms, usually with a bedroom uh, on the first level if there's no garage. Uh, some may in fact have all five upstairs, however. So we have got um, basically this scenario, Homes that are surrounding here, you'd have to go another block at least to find another new construction like this one. This one, list price was $769, uh, sale price $760, and was on the market for 15 days. All right, so um, these you can see, they still don't last very long. Uh, there are consistently active inventory available uh, and, and by that I mean at a given time uh, between 700 and about 850 875 you can expect to have uh, I'd say anywhere from three to five uh, opportunities like this uh, to purchase here in Edison um, so with that being said this is the final stop on our follow-up Edison tour in terms of uh, the properties that we're going to take a look at. I'm going to take one more stop, so stick with me. This is going to be back on Oak Tree Road. This is back towards the section where I was last time when I did the first uh, Edison episode, uh, focusing on the concentrated uh, area of Indian cuisine and other retail shops. We're going to take another spot a little further down from where I was last time, but just stick with me if you want to just catch a bit of the uh, neighborhood culture, if you will, scene. Um, of Edison that we're going to take a look at. Uh, but I want to thank everybody again for viewing once again. I have an important reminder if you want to stick around for just a few more minutes uh, in that final clip. I'll see you there. So we're going to conclude this episode here in front of the Patel Brothers uh, scan up just a little so you can see the sign here celebrating our food our culture uh, i'm gonna show a quick few clips of inside this is one uh if not the primary uh indian grocer in the uh in the area this is actually uh an Isolin address um so definitely credit to one of my viewers who posted a comment that on the uh previous edison uh episode i was on oak tree in Islin, not Edison. So Islin is a, if you see my Woodbridge uh, episode, is one of 10 smaller um, towns within the Woodbridge Township. Uh, unincorporated, but again, you can get to that episode if you want to get some details on what unincorporated is. Uh, but it's a town within a town, if you will. Um, so we're in Islin. We're only about a few blocks from Edison. Uh, but this is very much part of the Edison community, which is why I'm here. Uh, this stretch of Oak Tree, you've seen a portion of it in that first uh, Edison episode that just has a rich level of Indian culture uh, in this area that you'll find nowhere else um, in the world outside of India. This is the highest concentration of Indian population outside of India itself. So um, this is something that adds tremendously to this area of New Jersey, to New Jersey as a whole, because it's not the only uh, uh, heavy concentration of uh, Indian section of the state. I've mentioned before that uh, Jersey City also has uh, some similar areas as you'll find in uh, some other communities as well. Um, but this is something that I definitely wanted to feature. Um, I always want to kind of uh, include that as a part of Edison because that's a significant part of the Edison community. Um, so those who have stick, uh, stayed around, thank you. Um, what I wanted to mention as a reminder is that I'm giving away free t-shirts. So all you have to do is drop a comment that you'd like a t-shirt, we'll coordinate by email or however is best for you for me to ship it to you, no shipping fees or charges 
whatsoever. Just a thank you for following and supporting. This won't go on continuously, but I'm extending that for now. This is a thank you for those who have uh, consistently watched episodes in the past and have continued to check in just to see how things are coming along in the New Jersey market. So again, if you have not done already, please click like, subscribe, notification bell. I'll see you at the next episode. Stay safe.